When we return to our planet, the High Court may well sentence you to torture. All right, all right, all right. Uh, to take from a different uh, actor, uh, we are here with another vlogcast. For your entertainment needs, we bring you lots and lots of mini reviews of all the movies all the time, and occasional books and music thrown in. <laughs> but here we are. This is Septum Sin of Septum Sin vs. the World with Kotobuki Jake of yeah. Kotobuki Jake. Indeed, <laughs> yes. And also Septum Sin vs. the World. But today he's putting down that lizard in order to try and bring us his thoughts on the things that he's started and been working on this week. Don't, don't let that lizard run off. <laughs> sure, well, I'm sure Anderson will catch it. <laughs> Alright, so... But be sure to visit his channel if you can. Lots of nature stuff, lots of yeah. fun stuff on that. In all seriousness. Yes. So, at any rate, we are kicking off with uh, what we have started for the week? or uh, Started, finished, uh, just basically all the stuff that hasn't been finished, I should say. All the stuff that has not been completed. Okay. Oh, I've started a handful of things. As I this week, it's been, what, three, four weeks since yeah, we did this? Yeah, since it's the last a, time. <laughs> it's been a minute. Um, in which time, I have started three new TV shows, well, three programs. Uh, season two of Arrow, which is, of course, more of that Arrow awesomeness from the first, with a little bit of new stuff mixed in. And finally started watching Columbo. I've only gotten through two episodes, because yeah. each one's a movie. But yeah, a long, it's a long haul. I've still day. got my set sitting unopened. <laughs> and the most awesome one, I finally started watching Kimi ni Todoke. I've watched set one of three, so... Great series. Yeah, uh, yeah. It'll be fun. And for yours started? I only have three things. Okay. Um, I started uh, Sound Euphonium. Uh, I, want to see I have that. a European release because it's almost impossible to get the American release. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I have limited time. I have a region-free Blu-ray player, but it's upstairs on the side porch. And it just is not one of those that I can get to easily. Mm -hmm. And watch that cat now. <laughs> he likes running across our keyboards. Mm -hmm. So, um, any case, though... It's a pretty simple one. I've been watching it two episodes at a time. I'm almost done with season one. And season two I do have in the American release, so I'll probably mm -hmm. pick up from there. Mm -hmm. But I do want to get it done before I see Liz and the Bluebird. It's a fun anime. It's mm -hmm. based on girls in a concert band. Mm -hmm. I was a choir geek, not a band geek, so I can only loosely get a lot of this, but definitely not worth $75 in the three paid with three installments for season one and two more installments for season two and probably another two to three more installments for th season three probably <laughs> and final oh, not finally um and of course we had uh a one i was started this weekend which was called black summer hmm. which is a prequel of sorts to nation z which is it's a zombie uh apocalypse show mm -hmm. uh my wife wanted to see it and uh so i was like okay fine and uh we started watching it to me it's just more of the same it's well done i just didn't feel you know particularly impressed mm -hmm. um the other one that i started is same one that you started uh, which is dorara Two. Oh yeah, we did start that. <laughs> we, we as we finished one series, we started the next. Yeah. And this one was uh, pretty cool. It and was. We watched uh, what one episode? One episode yeah. so far. So hey, we're we're getting our way in now. No wonder I forgot. But uh, so far so good, and uh, mm -hmm. probably more from that yeah. once we complete it. I actually streamed that particular thirteen episode ish core 
Uh, but I haven't seen beyond that, so I'm looking forward to it. And this is my first time seeing it in English. So. Maybe this time next year. Yeah. So we're also going to, I guess, speed through real quick the movies galore stuff from this time frame. Oh, and uh, before we go, let me okay. go ahead and I'm going to okay. run through just one thing. What's that? Um, I thought about this. And uh, one of the things I want y'all to think of is these are more like mini reviews of what we have seen. Mm -hmm. um, not that what we are watching as much as more what we've seen. I figured that's the entertainment value we're getting out of that. I don't know why, but it just came with that revelation. <laughs> uh, so uh, we're looking at this as just small reviews, not big ones because we got a lot to cover yeah. in very little time. And but this, yes. this is also one reason why we kind of don't really dwell on the movies galore stuff, because we it's already covered. We have reviewed them in depth on those discussions, so we refer you to the discussions for the Wolfman phenomena, Suspiria '77 and 2018, mm -hmm. uh, all of which we have had in the last few weeks. Uh, and we also did a little mini discussion with Dave Stregge for Mermaid Forest and Mermaid Scar. And I watched all of these, I believe, during this time frame in preparation. And also in preparation for this week, Katsuhiro Otomo's classic anime Akira. Uh, which is going to be... Um, I think an interesting discussion. I hope so. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I'm so. actually quite uh, looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. um, it is one of those mm. things that I am... What's the mm -hmm. word? Um, <laughs> well, let's just say it's one I'm yeah. very interested in yeah. and, uh, and hoping that uh, it'll be a good discussion. Of course... For those of you who are mm -hmm. Movies Galore fans, mm -hmm. uh, it has already aired by yeah. this point. But I look forward to it. And I, I do think it is worth noting here that uh, with back-to-back -back viewings of Phenomena and Suspiria, I have now seen films by Dario Argento, which Yay. makes me much more educated in the world of horror than I was uh, of course, the things I picked up from the new Suspiria, I could have done without some of them, but, you know. I still can't believe it's the same <laughs> same freaking director that did A Bigger Splash and Call Me By Your Name. That's just, that's weird. It's, 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 whatever, it's weird. <laughs> so, this next one I'm trying to pull from um, uh, history here which is uh, one that's upcoming in a discussion. I don't know whether it'll be this week or it'll mm -hmm. be next week. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, Fantasy Mission Force, mm. a Jackie Chan film that is probably what nightmares are made of <laughs> because that's uh, it was definitely not at any pleasant dream, I, I can tell you that. Um, oh. But uh, I'm going to save, of course, uh, this stuff for later. Uh, when we um, do our discussion on it later mm. on, uh, whether it be this week or next week, mm -hmm. we'll see how it goes. Mm -hmm. Maybe it'd be good to put it off a week. How long is it? It's probably about an hour and a half. Okay, so I might be able to fit it in. Okay. It's very strange. Mm -hmm. um, and the editing is abysmal. <laughs> but it does have some light points to it. But if you want to see more, mm -hmm. check out Movies Galore mm. for that. All right, so now we're done with that, so now we can get on to the more in-depth stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't mind, I might as well lead off real quick, because this it. is Movies Galore related. Right. I saw a ton, and I'm just going to do these all together because these all attach to the Wolfman. Hmm. I have this disc that has all of the Wolfman-related movies to it. And unlike some of these others, and I'm probably not going to watch some of these movies over and over and over again that repeat. It's worth noting that we're talking, of course, about the Clay Jr. <coughs> <coughs> but, uh, you know, there's some, and I'm going to just run down and um, so that you can actually, uh, well, uh, so that y'all can know about them at home if you haven't mm -hmm. seen them. They're classic movies, so if you're a classic movie mm -hmm. buff, you probably have. Mm -hmm. Because on this disc came lots of other films, mm -hmm. like Frankenstein Meets the Wolfman, mm -hmm. which that one attaches to House of Frankenstein. Essentially, uh, 
Lon Chaney Jr. finds out that he's not dead in the first Wolfman movie and decides to go seek out Frankenstein. Hmm. Uh, but unfortunately, he can't find him, but he finds a relative who still wants the same secrets. So he and the Frankenstein monster try and help track down the secrets. Unfortunately, uh, the, bar the mob comes in and they all perish. Hmm. Which, it was an okay film. Again, I really feel like Lon Chaney Jr.'s acting for the Wolfman improved as it went on. And he really did play very well the tragic character in that. And the same thing with House of Frankenstein. Mm -hmm. Somebody finds it and thaws them out because they were frozen. And our quest for the cure of werewolfism continues in House of Frankenstein. Again, our monsters kind of crisscross with each other. And uh, I believe that Dracula also gets involved at some point. So we get to see all these monsters come together. And we're not talking like, uh, we're not talking Bela Lugosi Dracula. Hmm. This is, you know, your traditional Dracula. Right. Then House of Dracula, which I liked the most out of these on the discs. Because uh, it really tried to... There was a scientist that was trying to cure Dracula of his vampirism. And ends up catching the vampirism himself. Hmm. He also ends up working with Lon Chaney Jr.'s Wolfman. Hmm. And finds a way to actually cure him using some sort of cranial operation by the special fungus that helps to um, alleviate the pressure. Uh, or actually softens the bone so that he can... So you can Ooh. reshape the skull in order to help uh, alleviate the pressure of the full moon, which actually cures the wolf man. Hmm. And uh, it actually is quite good. It's well written, well acted. And uh, if I was to recommend any of them, I would probably recommend that. Hmm. But we can't lose the werewolf because he returns <laughs> and, the, and Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein. But not just the werewolf, uh, I believe we have Dracula as well. But not just any Dracula, Bela Lugosi Dracula Ooh. returns in this one. And uh, it's a fun little romp. It's not the best in the world movie, but it's a decent one. Yeah. It's kind of a, it's not really a serious one. I would like to think that the not werewolf really tale... Not really a serious one? Abba and Costello, man. It tries to be more <laughs> serious than it really is, though, at times. And uh, still, it is not bad. I would just say, timeline, it probably should go before House of Dracula. And House of Dracula really, I think, is the best end to the Lon Chaney Wolfman. Hmm. But there were two more. Werewolf of London. Hmm. Not to be mistaken with the other film. <laughs> uh, is a cover of a different type of werewolf legend, a Tibetan one. Hmm. Uh, where a person bitten by it is cursed. So it's very similar to the Werewolf of London story, whereas the person is cursed and they're gonna, and somebody's marked every night to die. Until, no, there's glass up there, cat. Um, everybody who is marked to die is eventually hunted down by the wolf and killed. So eventually, the main guy ends up prob ends up having to kill himself. It is. A interesting look. Most of these try to be serious. And the writing quality is pretty good on many of these films. I was actually surprised at this. Like, they're werewolf films. Mm -hmm. The last being She-Wolf of London. Mm -hmm. Which is about a family that supposedly has a wolf curse. And this young girl is having a hard time sleeping at night. And is made to think that she's going out murdering people in the park every night. So, whether that happens or not, I will let you watch the movie to decide. I think it's a fairly well-crafted, very interesting intrigue. But keep in mind, a lot of these movies were slow burns for back then. To me, they were intriguing because uh, anything that involves diseases or, or mm -hmm. problems with the mind, I, I have an interest in. Hmm. And that's all I gotta say about that. Well, speaking of movies that are kind of a slow burn and involve uh, issues with the mind, um, 
I finally made a point to watch one of the films I've been sitting on for a while now, where I checked out all those Best Picture nominees I was going to watch. All right. And I finally have seen Oliver Stone's Born on the Fourth of July. Woo! Um, I I won't lie. I probably nodded off at a couple of points because I have been very sleep deprived for various reasons. The last I've overcoming some terrible allergies and cats and whatever but it's an interesting film um tom cruise gives his all and does a pretty decent job um i was not blown away by it overall i know that's blasphemy to some people but still i am very happy that i can finally say i've seen it (laughs) yeah well so it's pretty good movie overall though yeah pretty good yeah. Well, one I definitely want to get to mm-hmm. because as we're running lower on time, we're down right. to 20 minutes left. Yeah. Um, Star versus the Forces of Evil completed uh, about a week ago. Hmm. It is sad. Hmm. I've been doing this for a while now. I've been watching it on, you know, every, hmm. every year I've been sitting there ready. Hmm. Disney's done all these archaic attempts to kill the darn series like releasing dumping all of it in a month or spreading it out at archaic times like i had to get up super early to see it Hmm. every sunday this this season Hmm. they really did not care for this Uh, i swear that they were trying to kill you ever see you ever feel like they try to kill certain shows off by putting them in weird time slots guaranteed they do it this time, there were a lot of things that needed to be wrapped up, a lot of loose ends, and I feel like they really had to rush to do it. Um, spoilers, by the way. And if you haven't figured it out, there are lots of spoilers in these. Um, but uh, many people got what they wanted because uh, Star and Marco did get together at the end mm-hmm. of it. And uh, there was a very strange set. Like, uh, they... They developed the uh, one of the big plot points at the first season of the Red Moon Ball, where the Red Moon is supposed to um, uh, cleave, uh, uh, well, it's supposed to actually cleave people together, uh, essentially. And they ended up breaking that curse, mm-hmm. uh, but they still managed to stick together just to show that their love was not just about the Blood Moon. And I feel like they really did their best to try and hook people up with other people and then dump them real quick. Because how how uh, she and Tom broke up was kind of just abrupt, but not anywhere near the way that Marco and his girlfriend at the at the season broke up. They were together two episodes later. Oh yeah, we broke up. It's a mutual thing. And she's like. We broke up. It was not a mutual thing. <laughs> but um, otherwise, uh, they did have Crazy Lady come back. Uh, Crazy Sailor Moon uh, character came back to wreak havoc, and uh, they had to fight. Most of the season was adapting to um, <coughs> the main character that they had been showing off as potentially the biggest baddie queen uh, the most evil queen uh, coming in, and it turns out she's not. Mm. That she's just was hated because she fell in love with the monster. Mm. So she ended up taking the kingdom back over, thanks to Star handing her the power to do so. And a lot of the season is her trying to win favor of the kingdom. But then they kind of said, oh, we're out of time. Okay, we, we've got to wrap it up. And then they wrap it up. Hmm. <laughs> Great series still. I love the series. I wish it could have ended better. I wish we could have had a few more seasons to tie up loose ends. Mm-hmm. But <coughs> still glad to see that I got to watch it. I'm happy for the time I've been with it. God bless you, Star versus the Forces of Evil. Yeah, let's see if Disney ever releases it. Yeah. <laughs> so, on the other end... A show that probably ran longer than it really should have. But it's had its ups and downs for me. One of the things I finished during this time frame was what I currently own, which is up through season four of the show 30 Rock. I did finish season four, and 
talking about random hookups and whatever. The kind of yeah. it ends literally three of the side characters getting married on the same day, wow. and three of the main characters hooking up. Probably not permanently. <laughs> so it's, I mean, they end the season with Liz having a boyfriend and it's played by Matt Damon. So, you know, you know that's not going to last because the show went for three more seasons. So <laughs> it's, uh, it's, in, it's a fun show, but I have very mixed feelings about it. And sometimes it's torture to watch and sometimes I love it. So, it, you know, it's weird that way, how the way some shows are. You know what I mean? <laughs> But whatever, so that one's done for now. I'm going to be very brief on this, mm -hmm. uh, which is Lego Movie 1 and 2. I mean, ah. I got Lego Movie 2 on Blu-ray, so I had to watch it. Yes. But I wanted to watch both back-to-back. -back. Lego Movie is a great and fun movie. And the Lego movies are so far. Yes. I haven't watched. Uh, I haven't watched the Ninjago one, but I. It was fun. I've watched the others, and they're really good. And the yeah. second one is just carries that on. Yeah. Um, I like the musical aspect of it. Mm -hmm. uh, the villain is hilarious in it, and uh, just in general, it's take a tongue in cheek thing. That is. Don't uh, you know? Don't take it too seriously. Just right. lay back and enjoy the films. I talked about the second one at length when I watched it in theaters on a vlogcast um, prior, earlier in the year. Uh, so, again, I won't be going over it much more, but Lego Movie 1, excellent series. Uh, I'm hoping Lego Movie 2 does get an animation on. Well, I was also going to cover the Lego Movie 2, the second part, <laughs> where I watched it during this time frame. That was your first watch, too. Yes, it was. And I agree, it is a very fun film. It should be up for animated feature. It very much needs to be nominated. I'm going to call this right now, Oscar, if you do not nominate the film for Best Original Song for Not Evil, <laughs> you are... <laughs> criminals in part because i want to see john lajoie get an oscar nomination for those of you who are not familiar with him he's a youtube singer who has made some very strange songs look up the video for everyday normal guy it is hilarious um i love the idea that he wrote the songs for this movie but not evil is just such a fun catchy totally not evil song i love it <laughs> except for the song you know it's gonna get stuck inside your head no actually not evil is catchier than catchy song i think <laughs> i also like gotham city guys that's a fun <laughs> song <laughs> but anyway so um i watched one with um for dave uh that i don't know what we're going to ever get to called the argon <coughs> quest I watched it a while back, actually. It's a Jim Henson production in Canada. Hmm. It was supposed to be a TV series, but they couldn't get a lot of it off the ground, so they kind of condensed them into a movie. It's a fantasy about these two kids, and their mother gets this... Uh, they, they inherit this talisman from her mother that was supposedly hmm. given to her grandmother by a giant. Hmm. And then when the giant... Uh, and when the world uh, hears about it, they're supposed to give it back to the giant. Mm-hmm. So they end up getting transported to this mystical fantasy world hmm. where uh, they encounter witches, wizards, and the like in, of course, classic Jim Henson fashion. Mm -hmm. It's a decent series uh, or decent film. Not, the, not my favorite by any means, but... It was worth a watch. If you haven't watched it, or if it's one and you like Jim Henson, or if you have watched this in the past, you're Canadian, and you'd like to watch it again, it's on YouTube. It's pretty easy to get a hold of. Okay. Now, unfortunately, because of our time crunch, I'm going to have to make a choice here. There are some really great stuff I watched. I'm actually going to put the two most exciting ones off the next vlogcast. <laughs> so you got those to look forward to. But what else I'm going to cover are four films, I hope we get to all four, that are last year's releases that I saw. One of them is the Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald. Oh. I did finally see this. It was very interesting. It was very entertaining. I enjoyed it. Uh, 
Honestly, I enjoyed the first Fantastic Beast more. Um, Eddie Redmayne does a fine Newt's Commander, but he's not really my favorite, favorite character. And the two sisters from the first film, one of them in particular gets horribly worked over in this one. I do not. The uh, Kowalski, uh, I think Jacob Kowalski was his mm -hmm. name, is still pretty hilarious. And Jude Law is wonderful as Dumbledore. He he I does am. a great job. Um, but they they could have done better, and they ended it on a cliffhanger. I didn't realize that they were going to do that, end it in the middle of the story, but they do. They end it in the middle of the story. They're banking on another movie. So There was a lot of controversy surrounding... I've yet to see the first one. Right. Um, but a lot of controversy around Nagini being uh, Asian. Right. Because they say, well, you're making the Asians evil. And uh, I don't know whether that's really that big I mean, Nagini deal. was based out of Asian mythology in the first place. Um, and the idea is, well, they gave a role to an Asian actress, but the, the idea is they should be giving more uplifting roles to Asian actors and whatever. Yeah. But, you know, how many roles like that would you have in this particular film? You know, you, you, the controversy shouldn't be so much with J.K. Rowling and the people in this film as it should be with their bosses who are not greenlighting more Asian-centric films. Yeah, I mean, and they could do a Harry Potter film based yeah. in Asia. Yeah, well, they could. They could very well do that for the next franchise, yeah. you know. And, um, you know, I'd love to see uh, something, maybe something for Cho's uh, family yeah. connections or something. I don't know. Um, and then the uh, the other controversy, of course, was Johnny Depp as Grindelwald. He does a fine job as Grindelwald, but um, a lot of people are not crazy about Johnny Depp nowadays. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. I do think that weird thing they do with his eyes is just weird. It's kind of <laughs> off-putting, but I don't know. <laughs> well, again, we're picking and choosing <coughs> for a lot of this because mm -hmm. we're down to the last like ten minutes of our... Mm -hmm. Thing. Mm -hmm. Very short one this week. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm going to cover one that really deeply affected me. Or mm -hmm. really two films. Mm -hmm. um, of mm -hmm. course, everybody who knows Ghibli is familiar with Grave of the Fireflies. Mm -hmm. But another series of movies that one should be familiar with about World War II Japan mm -hmm. is Barefoot Gen. Mm -hmm. That was a two movie series. Grave of the Fireflies, I have not made it a secret that it's not my favorite film. <laughs> I've watched it three times and never intend to watch it again. <laughs> I, It's just a film that makes you feel bad. But it's a film that's meant to make you feel bad. And a lot of sadness for what I feel was no reason in some cases. But there was a method, there was a reason why, and there was a message that was going through. But it was a different message from Barefoot Gen. Barefoot Gen is about a child who is living in, well, Hiroshima. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very unfortunate place to be living in World War II Japan. Mm -hmm. And he and his family are just trying to survive. Mm -hmm. You get to see a lot of the struggles that people are going through with people going to war, not coming back, mm -hmm. uh, people who are just trying to struggle with this, and even being frustrated with their own government and saying, you know, we just need to end this. This is causing us too much pain. We're not mm -hmm. going to beat back the Americans. Mm -hmm. We need to just get it done, get it over with, and mm -hmm. bye. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it also covers the dropping of the bomb. Hmm. It interplays a lot of historical fact and teachings with this moment. Hmm. I have rarely seen films that have affected me that way emotionally. Hmm. And I, I, when I saw the first few moments of the explosions and the immediate aftermath, Hmm. My jaw was just open. I was, I, I just, I couldn't, I was speechless. Hmm. 
Mm. It, it was literally that 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 terrible moment. Seeing the destruction and the horror wrought by that, mm-hmm. you might have a hard time watching this film. Uh, Sounds like it. Um, I mean, people with their skin coming off, things like this, people being totally vaporized. But this is the stuff that they had to deal with at that time. Yeah. And a lot of it was just, it was presenting it as historical fact as it was happening. And a lot of the stuff has been backed up in history books. I've read about it, but seeing it Hmm. and seeing this, just them doing what they're doing Mm -hmm. is an entirely different thing. Mm -hmm. But... Again, even though he loses most of his family, mm-hmm. his mother survives with him, and they manage to try and live on hope. Hmm. The second movie continues this story, talking about things like the Japanese black market, which is covered a little bit in this corner of the world. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, the Japanese black market. A lot of the orphans that are running around uh, in their own little gangs. And uh, Gen's representation, a lot of the times uh, kids being envious of being of other people with families being able to go to school and learn. Uh, many kids wanting to learn. Mm-hmm. And people who are just deal- giving into despair and hopelessness hmm. because of the whole issue. And at the very end, it has another tragic loss. But both films have one thing in common that I felt was missing with Grave of the Fireflies, and that was I didn't leave the film saying, I don't want to watch this again. (laughs) I felt far more hopeful at the end. It wasn't a hope, oh, well, they'll meet each other again when they're dead, (laughs) or they're all dead now, well, they can finally be at peace. It's the, they can finally move on, they can finally live they can try and continue and that to me was a very powerful message hmm. i i actually have found for a rare moment a film series that i feel was depressing horrifying and yet worth watching again and that's probably all I'm going to be covering in this vlogcast. Well, uh, that's probably all, pretty much all I'm going to get to cover, too. I guess I get one more shot. So, uh, it, it is one I need to look at one of these days. Um, and I guess I'm going to try and end on a bang. Um, one movie that I saw that I found very intriguing was... Well, just the idea is intriguing. It was a French filmmaker doing an old-school western. <laughs> uh but I saw a very intriguing uh, Western called The Sisters Brothers, which uh, focuses on Charlie and Eli sisters who are played by Joaquin Phoenix and uh, John C. Rowley, respectively. Um, you also had a number of other people, including Carol Kane shows up at the end as their, uh, as their uh, mother. Um, and uh, Jake Gyllenhaal, um is in there as well as a scout who basically they work for a man who calls himself the Commodore and the, and, um, Charlie is a kind of a rotten apple, if you will. He, uh, actually killed their father, but their father was a, it was a pretty rotten fellow. Um, and Eli has been kind of going along mainly because they're brothers and, and he wants to, try to keep him out of trouble and it was a very interesting movie it was very good look at uh sibling uh issues it was a very good well it was a western uh sort of a basically the commodore has commissioned them to find this guy who supposedly stole something from him and he has commissioned gyllenhaal's character to find the guy first and let them know where he is Gyllenhaal finds him and befriends him. It turns out the guy is a chemist who's figured out a way to chemically make gold fluoresce so that you don't have to dig for it or paint. you you literally can just make it glow and know where it is. Oh. And, and let's not even get into the environmental implications of this crap, which actually the movie does address, and I give it props for making it a major plot point. 
But the biggest thing that sticks in my mind that I have to mention is do not watch the Sisters Brothers if you are deathly arachnophobic. <laughs> there is a scene that put me on edge that I did not know was coming. And suffice it to say, if you've ever heard that rumor, which supposedly is fact, but you know, it's, it's a rumor or urban legend or what have you that you eat however many spiders during the course of your life because they like dank, dark habitats and will crawl into your open mouth when you're asleep. They put that into this movie. <laughs> it's a very interesting scene but again if you are deathly arachnophobic you might want to give this one a miss <laughs> if you are a cruel sadistic bastard you could show it to an arachnophobic friend I don't know but <laughs> uh, but it's a good movie overall and um, not a bad one to end with I actually have two more from last year one more from this year and a series and movie I need to cover so all of those will be put off till next time, and mm, all yeah. of them are, for the most part, ones to look forward to, I think. And there's no way but, I could finish what I've got. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you can see what I've got left. Oh, holy crap. Yeah. yeah that's a lot. <laughs> so, so, yeah, and uh, by the time we get around to next time, I'll have a lot to add to my list, too. <laughs> We're going to be doing yep. a... Uh, next time, we'll try and do right. a, another movie review extravaganza. Right, right. Matter of fact, I'll name it Movie Review Extravaganza. Sounds good. And maybe we'll just try and see if we can make the next time a very short week for releases and all that stuff coverage. Right. So we right. can hit it all. Any case... I hope you've enjoyed this rather short uh, version of our vlogcast. Mm -hmm. But next time, which will be in about two weeks, because I believe we're going to be doing our top ten, our next top ten next week. Oh, yeah. Oh, so, yeah. yeah so, uh, Good times. But after that, it's back to the vlogcast, and we're mm -hmm. going to try to go in on it. We're going to plow yep. through. Yep. So we will see you, hopefully, on the next one. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye.